it's M and Joe and we are back for another podcast. So as per usual, if you got here through the Tumblr post, post not plost, we're going to have a lot of those today. <laughs> uh, you may want to leave that open because it should be time stamped. I don't think there's actually too much else. We will also link the FAQ, all of the relevant posts from One the Trade itself so that you can have a chance to go and see those. That includes the face claims page, which Look, we can't lie to you. We totally have up for our own reference right now. We were going through it this morning. There's a lot. And hopefully this will be lots of fun. We've got some general life stuff, some books, some hockey, some head cannons. Let's have an adventure. Yes. All right. So the first question is kind of perfect because the first question is, how are y'all doing? Um, I guess we've... <laughs> The, the question does go on to say every time I read anything you write about how lives are going, I get stressed out. And... Like, admittedly, I think the last eight months for both of us has been a lot more chaotic than either of us anticipated. Pretty much. I mean, I've been in adjunct hell. Um, Which is professoring, by the way. Yes. Part-time professor hell. Uh, and it was my first teaching position full stop. So there's a lot to learn as well as a lot to teach. So I've been pretty busy doing all sorts of professor-ing. Which is really entertaining then because we talk about it every once in a while, obviously being friends and everything like that. And sometimes we deteriorate into academic conversations we wholly don't anticipate having until we're halfway through them. So it's been an adventure. Uh, for me, uh, for those of you who remember, I went back to school in September. And uh, the long story short, my uh, professors went on strike in, oh my gosh, October, November, I can't remember which, they were on strike for five weeks, which completely upended not only that semester, but my semester that was supposed to start in January and actually didn't start until like the 27th of January. And then my second semester, I was in a kindergarten classroom for placement and got sick how many times? Too many times. Too many times. And I was I, sick at the same time, and it was just a thing. So, yeah, it was a little stressful. Um, I think there was a lot of expectations that we both had about where we were going that didn't quite pan out the way we had anticipated. No. I know I definitely bit off more than I could chew in January. Yeah, I had. there was a lot of me going, look, you need to just calm down. Yeah. And attack the stuff. You know, having been through grad school myself, I well, mean, a different can of worms, <laughs> but I mean, grad school still sucks no matter what and I program think, it is. I think the worst of it for me was working and like I was working five days a week, going to placement three days a week, and then I had classes two days a week. So I basically only had my weekends to do stuff. And yeah, there was way too many times where... Joe very cautiously actually maybe implied rather heavily that I'd bitten off more than I could chew. So we made changes for the summer. We're much saner this summer than we were last semester. And knock on wood, I haven't gotten sick yet this semester. So it is stressful, but I mean, I think we both hope that where we are and where we've been will be completely worth it at the end of the day. Um, I think you guys can definitely understand that that's why we don't even have Clarissa up yet. Um, I think if I were to look back on my writing habits in the first quarter of the year, they would be abysmal feels like an understatement. <laughs> um, but you guys have been great about understanding that life gets in the way and sometimes we can't adhere to our original deadlines due to a bunch of things getting in the way. To completely change tracks now, uh, we got asked, what's your favorite snack? Taylor Hall. <clears throat> um... <laughs> But my actual favorite snack to eat is probably candy. apples and peanut butter. That's really creepy. I was about to say that. It's if we're talking, if we're talking like healthy snacks, absolutely apples and peanut butter. If we're talking not good for you snacks, um, geez, what is it? So popcorn, like popcorn's a pretty. Um, popcorn's delicious. Doritos. I'm a big fan of the nacho cheese Doritos, yeah. or just the cheese ones. Um, m ms top Smarties every time. And anybody who says differently, I still love you. Really, I can't even be confrontational about it, except I do get rather defensive about the difference between the two. Yeah. If it's a chocolate snack, then for me, it's Reese's. <gasps> the cups, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The pieces are like, you tried. 
yeah. and failed mm-hmm. to create a peanut butter cup in a smarty form. Pretty much. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we were clear on that one. And to clarify for non-Canadians, Smarties are... Um, but American Smarties are different. Are they actually? Yeah, American Smarties are like a flavored, like sort of pill-shaped candy that is vaguely fruit-flavored. Different fruit flavor. <gasps> yeah. No, they're delicious. Don't make that face. I want to say those are Skittles. No, they're not covered in a candy coating, though. It's like... What the bananas are you talking about right now? It's basically like a sugar pill that is vaguely... That has different fruit flavors. Americans, you have to back me up on this. I feel like we have those, but they're called sweet tarts. Sweet tarts are actually tart, though. Smarties are not tart. What? Or they're tart. Okay, so do you have a chocolate version of a Smartie? That is not an M&M. Not really. What? <laughs> I encountered this when I went to England as well because the Canadian it, Smarties are the same in Canada and the UK. My mind is blown. Yeah. No, so in the US it's like you have M&Ms or you have like Reese's pieces. We don't have your Smarties. Oh my god. Yeah, cuz our Smarties are like a candy. And you don't have ketchup chips. No, which reminds me I need to get some. And you can't have Kinder Surprise. No. You can have other Kinder things, just not Kinder Surprise. Okay. (laughs) I'm a little, a little shook right now. That's (laughs) things I didn't intend on learning today, but we're going to run with it. Yeah, that was our brief foray into a food podcast. Yay. Okay, but I feel like we do this all the time with Canadian and American things, because what were we debating recently in the group chat? And, like, I'm the sole Canadian in the group chat, which makes life, like, really entertaining really quickly. Um, I can't even talk about grad school or school in general. I know you and I were talking about loan structures. But I feel like we were, it was also something either college or grad school related in the group chat. Yeah, there was a distinct, like, oh, we don't do that in Canada moment. Which is like, it should be a hashtag for my life, really, with a, in the group chat with you guys. We don't do that in Canada. To do another 180, because apparently there are zero good segues between general life and the book stuff. Um, so we've got two, have you ever? Have you ever read the off-campus books by Elle Kennedy? And have you ever read the Gallagher Girls series, which is apparently a Spy Girls kicking ass series? Okay, so the Off Campus series by Elle Kennedy is a hockey romance series that takes place in college or university. And to answer that, no, we have not, because the only hockey romance we have read are the um, Carolina Cold Fury series by Sawyer Bennett. Oh, I Um, read one of those. I've read another one. Oh, okay, she's read another one. Bennett's series are the only ones that I have read, and... I've only read one, and M gave me her other book, and it's sitting on my bookshelf, and I've never read it. So, no, we, we definitely sort of keep our uh, kind of generally away from hockey romance, I guess. I think we get really picky about our romance, and that's the problem, is that we get, like, we're picky about our romance as a general rule, and then when you add hockey into it, we're twice as picky, because you run into that problem where it's like, Fic is better than what is actually out there published. Yeah, and for the most part, with what we've read, it's very much like macho hockey player guy. And I don't want to say we're not about that life because we do write masculine hockey players, but we have a certain aesthetic when it comes to our relationships, our hockey romance relationships. And it tends to be like, you know maybe masculine hockey players who are incredibly soft over the incredible women in their lives. And there's less of a stereotype, I think, in the way we prefer our relationships to work. Like, I find it's a little too black and white. Is that what I want? Like, it's very, it's very, this is the feminine role, this is the masculine role, and never the two twain shall cross. Yes. And... I think neither of us are particularly a fan of that. No. Um, I mean, if you guys have been listeners to previous podcasts, you know that I <laughs> I specialize in gender and feminist anthropology, so... Which I gotta tell you, we had a whole debate. Oh, you know what else we debated this year in the group chat because you were talking about that? Is polyamory and how it works in Canada. Again. 
again. That was a previous podcast subject as well. Yeah, you should go listen to that because that was the first time Joe was ever in Toronto. And I want to say we scared my grandparents a little, but it's fine. <laughs> um, I have read Rachel Gibson does the Chinooks hockey team series. And I have read the majority of those. And I genuinely enjoy those. I think okay. because there is a little bit more. A, yes. it's really tropey, which is right up my alley. Yeah, we do like like you're pulling the enemies to friends to lovers is the one I definitely remember reading and have read a couple of times because I really do enjoy that one. Okay. Um, I think they are a little bit softer on okay. both sides. Like the women are a little stronger. They're a little bit more, I'm here to take what I'm going to take. Okay. Um, and I think that's because a lot of the women that they have involved in the stories have their own lives. They have their own, like one of them is very Pepper Tony from your Marvel hockey verse. Ah, okay. So I think there's a little bit more balance in those and that's why I've genuinely enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's the other hockey series I've read. Gallagher Girls, neither of us have read, though, though, let's talk for a moment. Okay. We're going to bunny trail into AUs, we'll come back. Okay. Spy Girls AU, entire GB. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it would work. Trixie would be your explosive expert. <laughs> Probably with Clarissa. Probably. Um, Mike's the getaway driver. I feel like Dylan would be a good planner, but I feel like she'd be like under Sid's wing kind of planner. And Danny and Marsha would be the ones that would be like, that's not going to work. They'd be mm -hmm. like the voice of reason of like, no, that's a little too crazy. Yeah, well, Danny, uh, Danny for sure would be running the ops herself. Oh. She's the voice in everyone's ear going, don't do stupid shit. You went and done stupid shit, and now I have to troubleshoot it and get you out of it. Um, I mean, if we're talking sort of more leverage kind of stuff, Steph's totally the con woman. She's the one who can slip her masks on and off. I feel like Carrie could bringing. do it too. Yeah, for sure. Um... I mean, Jack would be the Elliot. She's the martial, <laughs> the martial artist and the one who's like, oh, I can identify that gun. It's a very specific noise. It makes a very specific noise. Yeah. <laughs> She's totally the Elliot. Um, hackers. Hackers. Oh, you know what? Dylan. Yeah, Dylan's more of a hacker type, I would say. Now that we're having this conversation. Yeah. Um, I can see Tyler doing it too. Mm -hmm. just by nature of like the but she would also make a good con person I think because she'd be so right. bubbly that you'd be too busy she'd be your femme fatale yeah um yeah, yeah. Austin could probably do it mm -hmm. who's the fourth one on the top one two three four Bren probably Brenda also a getaway <laughs> yeah or yeah she'd be well, you something get, something destructive and getaway driver something ex something Mike. destructive like, Mike and Brenda, um, I mean, like Mike and Brenda, Mike and Jordy, for sure, know all the vehicles. Yeah. Like, they can fly helicopters, they can drive boats, they can, you know, drive any car. Yeah. Hot wire cars. <laughs> Steel cars. <laughs> all of the cars. <laughs> um, let's see. Mal would probably be really good in ops and cons as well. Mm -hmm. Like, Mal, I think she has a very... I feel like she would have a very organized mind and can help plan out the entire op and guide people through. And also, yeah, help Danny. Keep Danny sane when everyone else is fucking up. Marsha, though. Oh, were we not supposed to swear? I We hadn't officially decided that, but I do find it very entertaining that you've sworn more since we started this than I have. I blame my little brother. Um, I have nothing to blame. I just, I think it's working with kids. I don't swear all day, so then I come home and swear like a trucker. I think we covered everyone. So yeah. you want to talk about any book recs? Sure. Um, I was behind on my uh, Goodreads reading challenge for most of the, the first third of the year while I was teaching, and then summer hit, and I was like, right, let's hit the ground running. So I've gone through all of Sarah J. Moss's uh, A Court of That's Thorns right. and Roses books, like the first four books that she has, and I really, really enjoyed them. She's really good at striking that balance between world building and then actually being able to move her plot along. Yeah, she's good at that. Sometimes you have authors who 
get very much stuck in the world building and build incredible worlds, but have a hard time moving through the plot because they're throwing so much description at you, rather than perhaps throwing you into it and letting you figure out the world yourself as things go along. And then you have the other authors who might, who are really good at building plot, but perhaps might suffer a bit, perhaps in terms of characterization and the world itself. So she, as a fantasy author, I think strikes that balance really, really well. And I have enjoyed those books. Yeah, and, she's good. Um, her Throne of Glass series is amazing. When the last one comes out in October, I'm fully going to die, I expect. Huh, so. that's going to suck for us. <laughs> so I've got like six figs to write, girl. You're going to leave me to write them by myself? <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think if I have any, I'm trying to remember, I have not read this year. Please see previous discussion on stress. Um, I'm reading Big Magic right now, which is really good. It's about creativity, which is really cool. It's a nonfiction. Um, oh, I read last summer, I think post our podcast, okay. John Stewart's oral history of The Daily Show. Oh. And it's very well done because it goes through Jon Stewart's Daily Show, but he, it, it's written like a script. So okay. you actually get to kind of, it's like they recorded an interview and then did the transcript of it. And it's really cool because you hear them talk about like how they developed, how the show developed. Okay. But then also like the Obama, the Bush and Obama years were kind of their bread and butter. Yes. yes. And so it, t it goes through the Bush years and how, how it was to do that kind of satire during the Bush years and then how it kind of shifted for the Obama years. It's really, really fascinating to read from the kind of satirical point of view. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I've read over the last year. I'm starting my annual reread of The Bride Quartet. <laughs> I've read Emma. I'm in the middle of Laurel. It's not going so well, but that's fine. Oh, Approximately Alex is a YA of, of, you've got mail. There it is. Okay, that took me a while. It took the book a while to kind of get up and running, but once it did, I kind of ended up pretty hooked. Okay. Um, everything, everything. I was telling Joe about this yesterday. Um, there's, and then she dumped it on my lap last night. <laughs> I did. I did. Well, I didn't make you buy it in Indigo, so. No. No, you made me buy the other book that... <laughs> I made you buy nothing. You chose to buy it on your own. That has nothing to do with me. <laughs> she shoved this one book in my face. The... Um... The title escapes me at the moment. Yeah, me too. She, it's a, it's not a Jenny Han, no. No, it's but it's a YA, and she she shoved it at me and went, "This is you." Read the description, almost kicked her in the middle of the bookstore. Legit. <laughs> well, I'll put a note in the um, post yeah. afterwards once we. Because the book is downstairs, and we're not going to go get it. Yes. Um, I think that's all for me in terms of the books that I would like definitely recommend in the last year. Yeah. Oh, um, I've gone through both of Renee Adier. I don't know if I pronounced her name right. And both of her duologies, um, The Wrath and the Dawn, is the is the other is the first one, and then Flame in the Mist is the second. Really, really excellent um, YA sort of fantasy. The Wrath and the Dawn is kind of a retelling of A Thousand and One Arabian Nights, and Flame in the Mist takes place in feudal Japan or. Um, and then I think the other one I've read post podcast is the McDavid effect, the nonfiction about McDavid going to Egl Eglinton, Eglinton, what is wrong with me <laughs> going to Edmonton? Holy cow, Emily. Um, and how that affected Edmonton from even like an economical standpoint, let alone a culture standpoint. And, uh, I will 100% tell you, Connie is at what? 22 K right now. Something, something absolutely ridiculous. It's going to be longer than um, Jack's story, which is unfortunate. Uh, but it was definitely very influenced by reading that book. So I have a Young Leafs book. I was telling Joe, I showed it to her yesterday when we were in Indigo. I'm holding off on reading the, the Young Leafs book until we start Austin's story because I have a feeling I'm going to dive in and then never see the way out. Well, yeah, and then next to it was the book written by P.K. Subban's father, and we're like, well, that needs to be a reference for when we start writing Mal. So we're low-key hoping it comes out in paper book, paperback before we get there, because I really don't want to buy the hardcover. Yep. And I don't library book, unfortunately, because then I have to take them back, and it's just, uh, sigh. <laughs> First world problems. 
Uh, ready for some hockey? Yeah, always. So, the first one I left here, which we totally could have responded with a gif, a reaction gif, and called it a day, but uh, Halsey won! He did! Halsey won the heart! He did! He did! Emotions, thoughts, feelings. I drooled, it's fine. <laughs> Slash, uh, I can't lie to you, questioned the jacket a little bit, but that's fine. I might have been too busy crying, though, to be honest, because I swear to goodness this year's NHL awards just went out there with the intention of making you sob. I think I cried four times. Shannon and I were talking about it. We cried like three or four times. Yeah, I only caught the tail end of it, but it was it was emotional, the bits that I caught. Yeah. So They did Vegas Strong. They did MSG, which is not Madison Square Gardens. And then they did Humble. And of course, of course Humble. being yeah. from Canada too and understanding what that meant mm-hmm. in Canada in terms of like... It's hard, it's hard to explain. Um, it's when we say for Canada, hockey is a lifestyle. You won't see it in the metropolitan cities. Like you don't see it in Toronto, except for the fact that the Leafs live here. And I mean, right now we're in the middle of Jay season, though they're kind of not doing great. So I think everybody's really looking forward to hockey season. Mm-hmm, free agent signings. Mm-hmm, I'm going to be obnoxious for eight months and I've already apologized. Um, but when something like that happens in a small town like that, it shakes a foundation that is uh, a little bit mind-boggling. Um, we actually, at the school I was placed at, did a sticks out for Humboldt in the front hallway. Mm-hmm. Um, and it did, like, even my kindergartens understood. And that kind of goes to show you yeah. just how much it means. So, yeah. yeah, the minute they started talking about Humboldt again, I was just... I texted yeah. Shannon. I'm like, I need a minute. I'm I'm sobbing at this point. But well, I mean, it's it's similar. The parallel I could find for the U.S. would be with football. Um, Marshall. Yeah. Marshall's football team. Um, I was trying to find one in my head and I couldn't. Yeah, but no, yeah, football, football is very. Football. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's exactly it. So. So now that we've made it depressing. Halsey <laughs> <laughs> yeah. won. Oh Hulsey yeah, won. we were being excited. I forgot. Um, yes. I was also very excited that Barzil won. The Calder. Mm-hmm. Um, McDavid got the Lindsay, which I wasn't surprised at. No. I don't think. Because um, Lindsay's the, the, the PA voted one, if I remember correctly. I, yes, it is. Yeah, so I can, I can see how that works. All the players going, yeah, no, he's still the MVP. I'm glad Halsey won his, though, because you want to talk about players that single-handedly drag their team kicking and screaming to the playoffs. I mean, if Taylor Hall is not directly beside that definition, I don't know what kind of hockey you're watching. Yeah. It was very exciting. It was he won. super exciting. I don't think I had any, like I watched the whole awards and I don't think I had any that I was like, really? Oh, there might've been one. I want to say Kopitar won over Bergeron and I was very confused. I I missed that, so I don't I cannot comment. I'd have to double check. Okay. There was one whoever won over Bergeron. Okay. I was a little bit confused. I think just because I'm biased in a very twisted way because he's also a Bruin, which just like why does he have to be a good Bruin because that messes with my brain cells. Neither here nor there. The point of the matter is, I remember thinking, but but Bergeron, like is that even allowed because Bergeron? So <laughs> there's that. Favorite hockey teams. I am interested in your answer to this. Honestly, I don't really have one at the moment. Just Might I suggest the Leafs? There's two gingers and a bunch of small idiots. Exactly up your shally. I'm waiting for the Did scandal. You say but exactly sh- up your sh- shally. 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 <laughs> I put an S in front of it for reasons I can't understand. I heard trolley. Oh well. There's um, Q-tips in the in the in the kitchen. No, they're not in the kitchen. They're in the closet. <laughs> I give up, guys. I give up. Yesterday was a long day because I arrived at 1.30 in the morning. And M is not a night person. Oh, gosh, no. I'm a morning person. So I went to... I did fall asleep before she got here um, because I can't do it. And Friday had been long for me, too. Fell asleep. She called at 1.30 in the morning, got her settled, went back to bed. My body still woke me up at 7 o'clock in the morning. And then we went downtown and we walked the St. Lawrence Market, walked to the Eaton Center... Walked back to Union Station, and then came home, finished Clarissa, and died. Pretty much. But it was a very productive Oh, it was day. wonderful. Like, lots of good food, good shopping, and good writing. 
Clarissa we got Dunn. Clarissa Dunn, which like I don't know about you, but there was a huge pressure that came off my shoulders with that. Yeah, I'm just I'm happy. Me too. I'm glad too that we're kind of shifting our original goal. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. But to go back to the question, with favorite teams, I mean, I mean at this point, I could. It's like it's more like I have players that I like throughout the uh, league because as explained in previous podcasts you know I grew up in Illinois Hawks were my team Hawks became this dumpster fire of a thing personally like personally not as a team like the way the way they played I oh, can't remember I mean, did you watch them this year they well, yeah. were just a little bit just a little well just, hmm. I mean I was there for their rebuild so it's like that's, not, oh, that's yeah. nothing new for it's me it's just a repeat yeah yeah it's nothing new for me so um it's just it's a very complicated position because it's like this is the team I grew up loving but now I kind of hate them so it's hard to find a team that I can throw myself behind completely, maybe just because part of me is still like. Might I suggest the Leafs? There, I do love many players on the Leafs. Um, I'm on a campaign to make her fall in love with Freddie Anderson, and I'm fairly certain I'm sixty percent of the way there, and Joe's just in denial. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I really, I really have enjoyed Vegas this past season. Um, the whole people going. Accusations of bandwagon fans just makes me laugh so very hard. Um, because how the heck can you be a bandwagon fan when it's the very first year of them being in existence? But yeah, I don't know. I and who cares? And who like, cares? okay, so here's another bunny trail because like who cares? Because it no. came up and like I get it, it's easier to love a team when they're winning, mm-hmm. but how else do you get involved if not for when something is at its peak and it's at its most fun and you're genuinely enjoying it? Exactly. And then you end up falling in love with one of the idiots and the next thing you know, you're a fan for life and you don't know how it happened. Like, yeah. if the Leafs were to go back to sucking tomorrow, I would probably still watch. I mean, I'm still watching the Jays and they are an interesting team to watch right now because nobody is using the term rebuild and they really should. Wait, what? Um... But I think that's, like... Yeah. No, I, well, I just... I have no patience for, like, fandom policing... No. ...in the first place. No. Why? It's like Do it's you just, not want more friends? Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, Vegas has been cool. I do like the Leafs. So, they're probably the teams I like the most right now. And I just love Jack Eichel. Yeah. It's unfortunate that Buffalo has been a dumpster fire. Yeah. Because I feel like I would watch more games. Like, honestly... I tried watching Sabres games when Eichel was out with his injury this year. Couldn't do it because Jack Eichel wasn't there. Mm-hmm. And why am I watching a game if I don't get to hear the Eichel Tower scores again? Yeah. What a classic. So I do like the uh, population of Pominville phrasing, though. Like, that's, mm-hmm. that's a good one, too. Yes. Um, I'm a Leafs fan. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to, like... Full stop it there. Um, I mean, if you can't already guess by the amount of times that Em has gift Leafs. Yeah, there's been a lot of... Part of that, though, was the Edmonton games are at 9 o'clock at night, and I cannot stay up for an Edmonton game. Yeah. And then Plessy previous semester was a shit show. There has been a lot more Leafs gifts this year, just by nature of the fact that that's the team that I tend to watch. Well, and then, uh, like, being from Toronto, it helps. I mean, my... Marner shaped issue is long documented since like the beginning that we've done these podcasts and stuff. Um, I would probably argue the Oilers are my West Coast team though. Like if I have to pick an East Eastern Conference and a Western Conference, um, Buffalo when Eichel's playing. New Jersey's been really interesting to watch. Part of my problem, and this is a huge bias and it's unfortunate, is I prefer the Canadian broadcasting over the American broadcasting. So it's actually very difficult for me to watch a game of two U.S. teams because it's always the U.S. broadcast. And that's a complete bias. Like, I will 100% tell you that's a total bias. I like, I think the Canadians are a little bit more applicable storytelling. So they'll tell you stories about the players on the ice, like how they grew up, where they grew up. They'll tell you how, you know, so-and-so played together with a team on so-and-so. But they also give you, you know, the plays, like how a play develops, why a penalty develops, where a puck went. And I don't find 
the American broadcasts are quite as applicable. No. Like, you still get the stories, but it'll be like... You also get a lot of stupid stats. On and it's, it's stats broadcasts. that, like, have no application exactly. to what is currently being talked about. So, no. you know, you've got... What? I don't even know. You've got the Blues and the Hawks playing, but they're talking about Braden Holtby, and you're like, he's not even on the ice. Like, why is this a thing? And that, for me, is very frustrating because I find the Canadian broadcast very seamless. Yeah. So I prefer to watch Canadian broadcasts. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other teams. Like, I basically watch... I, I'm more likely to watch a 7 o'clock game um, being on the East Coast and then having to get up at 6.30 in the morning to be a functional human being. Um, I don't get the chance to watch a lot of West Coast games, which is too bad because I felt very out of it for the playoffs. Like, I felt very uninvested this year um, just because I didn't know enough about a lot of the teams that were in the playoffs. So it, I wasn't really invested until, like, I missed the middle two rounds, I think. Like, I don't think I watched very much of the, bless you, <coughs> Penn's cap series which is unfortunate because those are always really good series yeah and during the playoffs there's a canadian broadcast of every single round so i don't even have that excuse i just kind of got bored with it yeah so so i'm a leafs fan i have a marner's jersey in my closet i have yet to buy anything to varus though i'm not banking on that not being a thing and uh, we'll see. We'll, this season is going to be... It's, 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 it's going to be interesting, it's, for sure. They scored 105 points with Swiss Cheese D and without John Tavares. What are they going to do with Swiss Cheese D and John Tavares? We will see. 110 points and still losing the first round of the playoffs. What? 2018 draft. Um, uh, the, I have to admit, I did not pay much attention to the 2018 draft just because I was too caught up in school stuff. So all I know is that Dolan went first. Yeah, you had a very off year for hockey this year. Yes. So that's that's all that I know. I'm sorry. Um, there are three Rasmuses on Rasmi. Rasmi? I don't know. how On <laughs> Buffalo? the plural of Rasmus? Yes, there are three Rasmuses. And Toronto drafted one. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's been a very Rasmus year. Um, picking my favorites, because heaven forbid I don't adopt new players every season. <laughs> um, Svechnikov, Kotkaniemi, which is unfortunate because flip in Montreal. Um, Philip Zadina on Detroit's going to be fun because okay. he's got the skill, so it would be interesting. Um, right wing, I'd have to double check Larkin because I never remember oh, actual Larkin positions. Can play any forward. Really? So it would be interesting just to see, like, you know, how you just want to see how players play together. That would be interesting. Yeah. Um, Evan Bouchard looks like he could absolutely F somebody up hard. <laughs> um, I've heard good things about Quinn Hughes, not adopting him though. Brady to Chuck in Ottawa makes me want to throw something at a wall because Toronto plays Ottawa all the time. Um, Noah Dobson, because I did watch Mem Cup as much as I could, because it was in, where was it? Shoot, Regina, Saskatchewan. So everything was off time-wise. Like, it's not an East Coast time, so I can't watch it. But Noah Dobson did kick absolute butt with Akadi Bathurst, the Teton, uh, out of the QMJHL. Um, and he was a joy to watch. I was sad Hamilton didn't win, because that's Maddie Strong. But, like... Mm-hmm. The Teton just absolutely London Knights the tournament. Like it was just, it was the 20, what, 16 Knights all over again. They were, they just bowled everybody over. Favorite goal play save of years of playoffs of, of, of your not watching hockeyness? Yes. So again, did not watch much hockey this year. I did watch most of playoffs though. So that was, at least I managed to get that. And so my answer for that is just basically Evgeny Kuznetsov's everything. Because he was a beast. And I loved it. Like, just the points that man put up. And he does it just... So, he does it so well. He does it quietly. He's a prick, though, eh? <laughs> but he's hilarious. I'm so, not disagreeing. I'm just saying he's also a prick. I mean... He's one of those players who, if you're not on my team, I hate you. <laughs> he's not on my team, but I love him. Yeah, but know. you don't have a team right now, so that doesn't count. Uh, there was a yeah. discussion that came out afterwards that was like, 
K, but OV for Con Smythe. K, but Koozie. And everybody was like, yeah, okay. Like, there was no, it wasn't a division. It was like, if it goes to OV, we get it. But if it goes to Koozie, we also get it and nobody's mad. Pretty much. I have a question, actually, yes. in that regard. Sure. Is anybody that isn't a Pens fan actually all that upset about the Caps winning? <laughs> like, legit, though, because I feel like everybody has had this big outpour, other than maybe the people who are like, why are you rolling in a fountain? And why are you drinking a beer through your shirt that you've pulled over your head? Like, other than, like, judging the ridiculousness of the post-cup win, <laughs> I feel like everybody was like, yeah. Yay, caps! Because first time in forty-four years, I think yeah. it's forty-four. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, so. first franchise win. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Does this mean also that we can stop having the debate between uh, Ovi and Sid and who's the better player? And now Ovi's less because he doesn't have a cup. Pretty much. Hopefully, because you know we rivalry talk. We don't rivalry talk here. We don't. Please I mean, see an entire thirty-one k fic we wrote about it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like rivalry unless we can turn it into a romance <laughs> but that wasn't even that was like dissing the whole con- oh, no. the, the whole oh, yeah. like narrative we were both no. like no this is not this is exactly. ridiculous why is this a thing exactly so um yeah spoiler alert we're not using it in Connie no as no. a narrative oh we'll get there though because I think somebody asked a question about it yeah, we'll so see. Your favorite play goal say. um so I have a couple of each because welcome to my life uh, favorite play is Mitch doing the Mitch thing on the power play. Um, the first unit power play for the Leafs was clicking like nobody's business at the end of the year. And it was like Marner at the point down to the goal, somebody tips it in and it happened every time. And everybody had to know it was coming, but nobody seemed able to stop it. They were just clicking. Uh, favorite goal, the Mitch and Matthews goals. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no, no. I lied. Okay, no, there's three of them that are better than the Mitch and Matthews goals. Because those ones were cute because that was the first time they'd ever combined on a goal in a season and a half of them playing. Yeah. But it's three of them, and they're my favorite for the same reason. Connor McDavid's shootout goal, I can't remember who it's against. I want to say Calgary because he gets particularly salty against Calgary, which those of you from Edmonton and Calgary get it. Um, Austin Matthews against Colorado, and then the Eichel to Matthews feed during the All-Star game. And they're all my favorite for the same reason. The goal before had been called back that they had scored scored before. McDavid's is pretty epic. Matthews is really funny because it's now used as a reaction gift because his eye roll is so hard. Like if Austin Matthews post goal being called back for goalie interference, eye roll is not a mood and it is and people use it. It's great. I need to look this up. And then, um, oh my God, it's... YouTube has it because it's just that much of a classic. Um, And then um, the Eichel Matthews one from the All-Star game where the goal got called back for goalie interference and then they scored the next one. And Matthews and then Eichel and Matthews both did the it's a good goal sign. Uh, Connor McDavid apparently pointed upwards and said to the rest, do you want to go upstairs for that one too? So (laughs) as you can tell, I'm a big fan for players that get salty about referees. Um... And I can't tell you how many times I texted what is goaltender interference to the group chat or to Aaron. I don't think anybody's quite sure. No one's sure. And if someone has an answer, they're a liar. A little bit. I mean, it was inconsistent this year. And that was the thing that I heard all the time is that all they want is consistency. And it was inconsistent. Yeah. I mean, I can think vividly. There was a goal against L.A. where Quick had time to make two moves. Marner held on to the puck long enough for Quick to get back in place. And they still called it goalie interference and no goal. Yeah. And I was like, really? Like, that's, no, he had time. If you're going to call the original interference, then call that, put Martin in the box for a penalty. But this yeah. is just out of hand. That's Lesky's save. Also good. The one where he, the puck was rolling across his back and he reached behind and grabbed it. Oh, yeah. oh. Garrett Sparks also made some really good ones in the AHL. There's one that it went off the butt end of his stick. But I was telling Joe earlier this morning, I'd heard somebody say if Sparks was ever actually in position, he wouldn't have to make as many spectacular saves. So there's something to be said for very active moving goalies um, <laughs> and the lengths they therefore have to go to to keep the puck out of the net. Yes. Want to talk about Dangle? Sure. What do you know about Dangle? He is a ray of sunshine and I adore him. <laughs> um, I love Dangle. 
Um, he's just so much fun to watch because of his energy and his his love for the Leafs is so pure. Oh, is it? Isn't it just? It's the purest thing. And what I like about him is that he views situations from all angles. Like he doesn't take a very okay. like one sided view on things. So that's what I don't watch him or listen to him as often as like Evan Shannon do, but every time I see him, I'm like, you're a good one. We can keep you. Um, Joe said the underlying everything about Dangle. Uh, Victory Puppies is a precious, precious addition. He's got two uh, Labradoodles. Um, if you're looking to get started, the 9-2 Nashville game from the 15-16 season, I want to say. Um, no, 16-17 season. It's the 16-17 season. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 9-2 Nashville game. The 6-3 Canucks game is also really funny. Um, my current favorite is a toss-up between the one, the video he did for Sportsnet before Tavares sign that is John Tavares, please come to Toronto. <laughs> I think it's really only particularly interesting if you understand all of the references he makes to Toronto-based things. Mm-hmm. So one of the things he says is like, the construction on Union Station will be finished eventually. <laughs> because it's been, like Union Station's been under construction for as long as I can remember at this point. Um, he's got another one too <laughs> about how the GO train runs later now out into uh, Oshawa and Ajax. Um, that one's really good. His John Tavares as a Maple Leaf is pretty epic because he's just, he's the epitome of Steve Dangle. Like he's yeah. into it. He's there for it. He uh, makes reference to the double fisting that Scott Moyer did at the Olympics, <laughs> which is just precious. Um, he even uses the tweet. Oh, there's a great section too where he's like, of course Austin Matthews is excited. He's not an idiot. <laughs> And it's, it's just, it's very, very well done. Um, I would start with one of those ones. The 9-2 Nashville, the 6-3 Canuckles is the title of the video. And then um, either of his videos for John Tavares. One is up on the Sportsnet channel and one is on his channel. And they're both great. He did a really good cut check too. He did the playoffs, the final. Mm-hmm. And he recapped the final, which is yeah. really cool. He's got a video of the dude who runs Russian Machine Never Breaks crying when the Caps won. Oh my god! Yeah, he loves Russian Machine Never Breaks. Wow. He's he's it a precious is. piece of sunshine. Yes, Russian Machine Never Breaks is also a wonderful, wonderful hockey blogger. Yeah, um, the hockey it gives you emotions line that he also has is also good. Shout out question asker because I didn't write down who asked the specific question. Um, and to segue, I guess then, because now we're going into more headcanon see. stuff. Um, if we were ever to do a I forgot you were going to talk about this. AU, uh, Marnes would totally be a Steve Dangle. Tell me, tell me that is not the actual epitome of Mitch Marner. Yeah. Mitchie would kill a Leafs thing like that. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, Yeah. I lost, I lost my mind when we were talking about that. Yeah. Um, the other one, so I've been holding on to this question for 100 years. And part of it is because it came in when I was super effing sick and just did not have the brain power to answer it. And part of it is because we, I, I, more than we, uh, did a bit of a 180. <laughs> have we ever talked about to Chuck Matthews? Yeah. And have we ever thought about writing a fic about it? The answer, the answer to both questions is yes. Um, our original pairing for Austin was... Was that. Was that. Um, they were so great during the draft. And I... But the other things happened and... We've changed the storyline we want to take for Matthews. How many times? At least three. At least three, if not more. And we're still not settled on where we're thinking it's going to go. Um, because where we're thinking it's going to go really does depend on what happens this upcoming season. Yeah. Um, so that did get changed. We did think about it, though, because I think we talked about it in terms of, like, the distance being a problem. But Except they go back. Really. And they go back so far because yeah. they played together in Scottsdale and, like... 
the I can never get the acronym right, but the National Development Program is always yes, its own. TDP, yeah. It's own the cult. cults. The cults of the US um, and TDP. So we have talked about it. We have thought about it. Uh, we did f- have some scenes written for it, but, you know, things just changed. and I mean, hell, Dylan's a girl now. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. We didn't initially write her as a girl. No, so we got to edit that um, one day. I mean, we never say never. No, and there's it's not... To say, you know, that in an AU of an AU, we don't change our minds. Yeah. Um, I think for the purposes of GB, we are pretty set yes. on this one. Because yeah. there's, I think, a little bit more meat to it. I think it's just because of the way that the seasons have gone. Yeah. Um, and the two canceled dates of the T'Chak tour that happened because <laughs> he's a little shit. Yeah, um, uh, I, I just I love how much of a shit that child is. Like, it's just it gives me so much life. He needs to settle though. He does. He does. He can't be a pest for the rest of his career. Not the way he's currently being a pest. Yeah, and like spearing just... from the bench, like he's gonna get way more suspensions. Like yeah. he's gotta slow his roll. Yeah, and just given the type of player he is, it's just like, why are you doing that? Right. You don't need to do that. Now, one of the comparisons that came up originally was Nazem Kadri. Yeah. So, there's hope for him yet, Calgary. Yep. <laughs> uh, what's up with Hanny? That was just interesting, for one thing. The trade? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I mean, given that the Canes GM was going, no, 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 it's not going to be a thing. Three days later. So you have They're to cleaning wonder, house there. Yeah. You have to wonder what was on the table in that case. So I've heard some interesting rumors about Hamilton. Because he's the defenseman that went the other way, if I remember correctly. Okay, yeah. And he was having some culture troubles in the room. So Calgary wanted him gone. Okay. Interesting. Um, so I've heard some interesting things in regards to him. Um, I don't know if Carolina is necessarily a better place for him. Yeah. But it sounds like Carolina's cleaning house. Like, yeah. it sounds like, you know, they're even talking about Jeff Skinner for a while there was up. They were willing to entertain offers on Jeff Skinner, which, like, yeah. that kind of goes to show you. But in terms of Hanny in writing. He does. He's hanging out. He's, he's chilling. Out. He's hanging out. He's, you know, watching all the drama go by and just. Kind of laughing a little bit, but he'll have his... He'll He'll have have his his day. He'll have his day. He'll have his day. And that doesn't include whether or not he shows up in Austin's story by nature of the development program again. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's just the story, Clarissa, which is the only story we've been writing right now, just by nature of life. um, life. Good God. Well, that's not wholly true, because, like, there's Connie, which I've been picking at for the last year, and then there's your lovely little adventure. (laughs) Which I guess, oh, you know what? We gotta, I don't know where that's gonna fit. We gotta talk about collabs. Um, well, we can talk about it after this one. We can. But we'll um, just not go panty. Well, because one of the other questions here is like, we just talked about the trade. I think it's gonna be very interesting that he's in Calgary. I'm yeah. very interested to see whether it works for him. Yes. And I wish I had the answer on whether or not, um, did he sign a contract? I don't know. Can you Google Hannah Finn contract Calgary something to the effect and let me know if he signed because his he's up. And then the next question is speaking of Jack, how does Jack react to the trade? Jack wonders why all her best friends keep going over to the Western Conference. Okay, so let's bunny trail there for a minute because. At this point, legitimately, with the Galchenyuk trade... The NHL keeps splitting up our play, our pairings. It's... The only one that flies right now... Oh, my God. It's um, Seggs and Benny. And Seggs is up. Yeah. So if Dallas is not going to renew, because when's Benny's contract up? Yeah. Is that literally the only one left? Um... Mal's on the West Coast. Yep. Oh, my God. Is that literally the only one left? I think it might be... Oh no, Sid and Gino. Oh my god. (laughs) We do that every time. Sid and Gino and then... mm, Spoilers. I'm not going to say anything, but spoilers. That's true. But we'll see how that works out because that's a contract that's up and the the Leafs are going to be right up against the cap for the next seven freaking years. 
which like I'm low-key okay with but also low-key panicking about because like Gardner is up next year and like do we keep Gardner do we toss Gardner like this and these are the questions that play humanity or just me and the Leafs fans but that's fine yeah, I don't see anything about his contract. Either. Okay, so conceivably he hasn't signed a contract. Um, I would text our resident secretary, but I don't know what she's doing right now. And I don't have my phone on me because we're podcasting. So we can talk about... I was going to say, do you want to talk about collabs or do you yeah. want to talk about Seth Jones making the CBJ pick? Um, but again, I didn't watch the draft, but I'm sure it was lovely. Uh, the actual question is, do the rookies get awestruck or nervous with Steph? Oh, of course they get awestruck. It's Steph. She's just this, she's like this ethereal, cool, collected, um, what is the word I'm thinking of? Um, not genteel, but sort of. She just has an aura around her that tends to inspire awe. They definitely, they definitely get a bit starstruck. Was it a podcast where we talked about how she wraps them all around her finger within the thir- first 30 seconds and then like... Yeah, pretty much. And we talked about it in Jordy, how Jason goes, yeah, you've never let us talk to her though. That's because it! Like, That's what I'm, I'm thinking of! She's like, I am protecting you guys. That's what I'm thinking of. That's 100% the discussion I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah, no, it was a scene in Jordy. God, we're so smart. So Past us out here doing future us favors all day, every day. <laughs> So let's talk about collabing because one of the questions, and I don't currently have it open, but is about what it's like collabing with other people. Uh, let me pull up the question. <laughs> All right. So the question is from an Anon. How does it feel to collab with different people? Obviously, you guys have awesome writing chemistry, but how does working with other people differ from working with each other, given the expanse of works you've put together? So I've recently collaborated with our friend Kayla on a McGeichel boy band AU thing. M has collaborated with Shannon writing some stuff for Woman Trade and she's collaborated with Laura. Laura on um, the HP AU? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then we've written a couple of other pieces. Um, smutty pieces, Oilers pieces. Yeah. Uh, I think Shannon and I, Shannon and I wrote one together too through that okay. pen name and not through Woman Trade. Okay. That cool. Because yeah. usually if it's stuff for you, I just write it through One the Trade. And yeah, if yeah, Shannon yeah. helps, then yeah, it's a co-authorship yeah. with One well, the Trade. But. Yeah, but when we write when we write RPF that is not GB closer stuff, we have a dif- we have different pen names for yeah. those. Just because we like keeping things super separate. Separation between church and state. I was listening to one of our podcasts the other day and I yeah. said it and I had a giggle to myself. It's true. So um, working with other people. It's really interesting, actually. Mm-hmm. Because the level at which Em and I have clicked in terms of writing is pretty insane. Because, first of all, before I started collaborating with Em, I haven't really collaborated with anyone before. The closest parallel is back when I was doing Bleach stuff, which was a long time ago, when um, I was baiting for Matsumama and she was baiting, baiting for me. That's probably the closest sort of collaboration that I've had. And, like, we lived in each other's stories in those bleach days. So we really, like, the level of knowledge that we had and the way we were able to really talk through those stories was something that I haven't had until I met him. And so I think it's one of those things, like, like lightning doesn't strike no. twice. Because it's um, we were talking about the collab that Joe did with Kayla and... You can, like, the thing about Joe and I and GB in particular, and we've talked about this briefly before, like, people ask us, what happens if you have contradicting headcanons? We don't. We don't. <laughs> and that's really, it's a really weird kind of concept to to be able to go to somebody and say, like, the Jack that's in the boy band AU is the Jack. Like, for both of us, I would not, I would have written Jack the same way, given exactly the same parameters. My Connor would be very, 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 very slightly different. And all yeah. it is is a reframing of exactly the same actions. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to literally everything we do, there's a very clear path that we're both on together. I think what's interesting about writing with other people is as much as I love Laura and I love Shannon, 
it is a very different experience writing with them. And some of it is a different style. Like Joe and I have very similar writing styles too, which makes life a lot easier other than the fact that she can't spell favorite properly or honor properly. And that's fine. She's laughing at me right now. I would now. argue that she can't spell those words properly, but I'm I fairly really certain you guys just dropped the U to be a dick to the UK. So like, let's, let's, let's. Of course, because how else do we make our tea except by throwing it into the harbor? <laughs> <laughs> I just laughed harder at that than I should have, but that was funny. <laughs> so I think it's just, it's very interesting to collab with other people because Joe and I don't fight over much. Like we don't yeah. even argue over much. We don't argue over the way a story goes. Last night we had a bit of a roundabout discussion because I think we were both coming at like three lines in Clarissa from two very different perspectives and we kind of had to figure out how to get on the same page. Yeah, and part of that was also just long day. And, and yeah, it's not even like it was, we weren't at peak writing capacity. We were both we coming were. at it with the same goal in mind. Yeah. It was just, how do we take the two perspectives mm-hmm. and, and mix them because yeah. we never really pick one or the other. It's no. usually a mixing and you'll probably, we're going to talk about, somebody asked about kids, which hockey players have kids, which girls have kids. And when we get there, you'll see like we're very much on the same page about every single girl and how it's all going to fall down. So it, what's weird is writing like when Shannon and I wrote your post PhD celebration fic, that was Mm -hmm. a little bit strange because I've never had to let somebody into Jack like that before. (laughs) And it's a very strange experience to have to explain and this Shannon I love you to death you know this this is no knock on you whatsoever you don't live in GB like Joe and I live in GB and we wrote it with Jack and Connor from GB so like I literally had to spill the beans on so many little things that we talked about yeah and you don't realize that the people that are reading it don't see those little bits and pieces yeah so it's a very strange kind of concept from that perspective um it's interesting to write with somebody else when they don't have a handle on a character too so Mm -hmm. uh laura and i not shannon laura and i uh, the Harry Potter AU. The Stromarner one, we were on the same page. Yeah. We knew who Dylan was. We knew who Mitch was. We didn't have to kind of figure that out. We're currently writing the McEichel one. And Laura has said a hundred times, she struggles with the right balance of sass and sweet and Jack. Uh, and how to get across how he cares in a way that is, for lack of a better phrase, bitchy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's very... The Japanese have a term for it, sundere. Of course they do. Them and the Which Germans is, just have great terms for, like, the yeah. most complicated emotions. Yeah, no, sundere means, like, cold on the outside, but warm on the inside. Squishy. Yeah. He's squishy. And I wouldn't say Jack's cold, but he is a sundere type. It's yeah. just that what's outside is very much not what's on the inside. Yeah, and it's very, like, to have to kind of learn that characterization is not easy. Yeah. Um... And especially, like, Laura is a soft, fluffy human being. So to have that prickly outside is not something that comes naturally to her. Because all of the, even, like, so Euler's fan, so she's written Halsey Ebbs, she's written, and it's not the same prickly. No. So it's, it's always interesting. It's a stretch. Yeah. Like, there's... I can't, what did I do? Wrote with somebody else for a while, like mm-hmm. a month or so. And then we sat down and I want to say we banged out the end of Brenda or mm-hmm. something. Who did we write in December? Did we write Sid in December? In December? Yeah. Of this, of last year? Yeah, what did we write December last year? Or was Brenda the last one before we got Brenda Clarissa? Brenda was the last one before we got That was Clarissa. September. Holy cow, we're going to be a year? Yeah. That's, wow, life's been rough. Um... I remember coming back to writing with Joe and there just being a real relief to it. My brain didn't feel like it had to work as hard. Um, And that's, that's no knock on on brains work differently and head cannons work differently and everybody's going to come at things from a different point of view. Like, yeah, some of the collabs I do with other people, I have to, for lack of a better phrase, argue a little stronger for what I want or what I think or where I think the story is going to go but that has absolutely, like, yeah. it's still a genuine... Writing the Stromarner Harry Potter AU was a genuine joy. 
Yeah. And it was an exercise of muscles that I'm not used to using. Yeah. Because it is so angsty. You texted me so mad at me <laughs> because it just, like, it's so angsty. And that's that, Laura yeah. to a T. Like, that's her influence 100%. Yeah. Um, and, like, for the two of us, the angst is more my wheelhouse. Oh, 100%. So. But that's fine. I get the smut one, which, yeah. like, is just funny for Connie at this point because I'm struggling. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's definitely not. We collaborating with our collaborators mm. has been a joy. And, like, for the boy band AU, again, it has also given me that outlet because it's just like, oh, I can talk about music and stuff like that. Um, and I can, as Kayla called it, throw nukes of angst around. A little bit. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's just really interesting with M and just that we do click. And then it becomes interesting when we read each other's collabs because you can always <laughs> tell. Like, we've written together so long yeah. that you can tell... Which I think one of the Anon, the Anon who asked about the fic originally, yeah, um, actually came back and said, "Oh, now I understand why it felt so familiar to me." Because it's me. <laughs> and and you can I remember I don't think I told you originally that the Stromarner was me. I think I just sent it to you guys and said you guys need to read this thing. Perhaps. And it's been a while. We talked about it afterwards. There was one fic I definitely sent you without telling you it was me. Mm-hmm. And you came back at me like this is like you and I went well it should be because it is me yeah and so it's no, it's always fun to be able to tell who wrote can, what it is really creepy that we can tell that we can like oh this is so this is so M scene this is so yeah. M scene and um yeah and I think one last bit that's also probably a part of us working so well is just the fact that we have been writing for so long like writing fanfic we've been in fandom for a really long time like we're fandom olds not, yeah not fandom super olds but we're fandom olds I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm like hey kids get off my lawn yeah I'm, I'm getting there so it's just I think that also lends part of it just because the writing style was so different when we started yeah even my style like I was talking to Paulina about this the other day I can't go back and read my old stuff it just yeah. it, I can't do it and yeah. my old stuff is a decade old, if not more. Yeah. So it's just it's just that, like having that sort of shared background as well. Yeah. And the same shared growth too, I think, mm-hmm. is another part. Like again, we are fandom olds. We've been like I was saying Joe this to Joe this morning, like I lived through the Spice Girls and the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and their heights. Like I experienced the nineties as a living, breathing human child. Yeah. And so there's a lot, too, that we've learned about life and about complicated black and white versus gray kind of thinking that I think we can bring into writing in a way that does make it unique. Yeah. Um, And we've had a lot of growing experiences. We've had a lot of really bad writing. And we've had people (laughs) come in and go, like, hey, listen, come at it this way. and. Oh, yeah. I think like that too really brings us to a different position just in terms of mindset and For sure. experiences that we can kind of manipulate in order to apply to different scenes. Absolutely. Uh, are we going to get anything from Mal? I'm excited. Um, there's an a insinuation here about how many issues. Insinuation isn't the right word, but that's fine. The issues that can be tackled. Have you decided who her pairing would be? And if it's a surprise, can you tell us who were your second choices? Um, we spilled who, Mal's. We, yeah, we spilled. Yeah. It's it's in it's on one of the trade in one of the stories. The All Star Game. That, yeah, the All Star Game. So I would have a look at that one. Did we have other no. options? No, I really don't really. think we considered anybody else. I mean, like as much as that pairing is a little like crack. It is a little to go to go to fall back into fandom old terminology. It is completely a crack pairing, but the way, but trust us, it came from a place of logic. Yeah, it did come from a yeah, place of did. logic. Um, but yeah, no, I wouldn't. When uh, Malcolm Subban was up and down in the Boston system, there wasn't really anyone that really stood out. Um, draft stuff. I mean, he had great chemistry with Chucky, but obviously Chucky's taken. So, um, As if he was going to be with anybody that isn't Bren. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was kind of like, well, no. And so the closest would be perhaps someone now on the nights, but I don't know. I haven't seen I haven't seen those. anything. I haven't um, seen enough of those interactions. That's the thing is you don't... 
I don't know if we're just not watching the right videos, but we don't see a lot of just Malcolm Subban in general no. being pally and bro with. I don't. And players. yeah, Knights fans, yo, link us to some stuff if you know, because I know he was he was playing like he was first string for a long time there. Yeah. So if there's anything you can think of, we'd love to hear about it for sure. Yeah, um, just because we will need it for Mal anyway. We'll need um, it for Mal anyway. Um, I don't think we're in a mindset where we're going to be changing and comparing anytime soon. So no, just, just because we have a lot of head cannons yeah. built up around it already. Um, so just keep that in mind. We're probably not going to change our minds. And unfortunately, we are stubborn AF. Um, we both are. We're excited too. I'm not sure when we'll get there. Like, I'm going to be straight up with you guys at this point. Our original goal of doing three a year is not looking like it's going to be a thing at least for another six months or so. Mm -hmm. Probably more like eight or ten. Um, we might be able to recalibrate next summer when I'm not in school. You've got two years under your belt. It's a little bit yeah. more consistent. Like, we might be able to come back and, and fall back into the better scheduling in terms of GB. Um, life happens. I mean, just ask the Knights for all. Like, I mean, well, you think about it. Like, they went into, they had how many goalies in the first half of the season yeah, and was, made it to yeah. the Stanley Cup final? Like, yeah. it's a team that should not have happened. No. With all due respects to Knights fan. Um, so we can't wait either. Um, I don't think she's the next one on our list. I think we want to get uh, for GB. Uh, for GB, we want Austin. And Less. Mike. Yeah. yeah not sure. necessarily in that order. Maybe not in that order. I kind of want to do Mike first. Whatever works. I, mean. I think Mike first. Well, Mike's just been sitting there for so long at this point. Like, we might as well clean it up and finish it. Mm -hmm. And we did have a good talk this morning about with Mike's trajectory, with the trade to come on Red Star. Like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, um, um, we, we definitely have some opinions and some ways we think that will go in terms of her story. So, and I think it puts us on a different trajectory, which is going to be arguably easier to deal with with her too, that I think sure. is going to be. And then you get Tom winning the cup and, and, and. So, sure. So I I'm think thinking, because then the other yeah. thing is i got to read that book before I'm ready to do Austin. I want to see the season. I have anticipating, yeah. I'm anticipating taking notes. Yeah, so I mean, the way it might end up working out is just like, let's, then maybe Mal, and then maybe Austin. Yeah, maybe, Who depending knows? on the time. Yeah, we're it's done making event. promises at this yeah. point. Yeah, I yeah. think our Christmas one is not GB, the one we're aiming for at Christmas time. Yeah. Is not GB, which I am... Yeah. I miss our OTP. Yeah, um, I I reread a bunch of Mac our McGregor stuff before I came here and texted them going, I miss our dumb OTP. And they're so dumb, and I miss them too. So, I think we're gonna kind of go back to our roots for a little bit. Yeah, just to for our sanity as well. I mean, I think that's one of the things that'll be really nice is just to get back to what we really our bread and butter. Yeah, so and I think it'll be. It'll be nice to not, like, don't, don't get us wrong. We love GB. It's always fun. It's always a stretch in terms of skill and in terms of mindset, plot points, yeah. um, evolving style, the whole nine yards. But it'll be nice to be able to come home for a bit mm -hmm. and not have to cook our own dinner. <laughs> um, for sure. So I think we're both looking forward to coming back to... Oh, whoops. <laughs> um, yeah, so with Mal, we have tons of ideas. We love her pairing. Crack ship as it is. No other pairings in mind. We have some fun thoughts for what she was doing this season with the Knights and stuff. So Yeah. What her significant other was also doing at the time. Like there, I texted them going, fretting at Worlds. And yeah. she just went, fretting! Yeah, um, it'll be good. It'll be neat. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if we have the underlying narrative yet necessarily. No, not really. But it'll come. It always does. Yeah. Um, I should have put this up higher, but I didn't. Austin and Freddie as a pairing. We have Austin's pairing. We have like Austin's let's pairing. be let's be clear about that. We implied it back when we were talking about Matt Chuck, but we have Austin's pairing. Their friendship and dynamic is really interesting. Are you at all familiar? You've sent me stuff. 
Yeah, because I'm trying to get you to love Freddie. Can you just love Freddie and then I will not stop? That's a lie. Mm -hmm. One of my good friends from school is a huge Leafs fan and I just sent her a post the other day of Freddie wearing a suit and died a little on the inside. Mm -hmm. I think in another world... That would be cute. It would be fun to try. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe... a great fic, the bakery one. The bakery one where Freddie's a baker and Austin's still a hockey player. Have you not read that one? I've. It's not that I haven't read that one. It's that there are about four or five really good bakery AUs that have somebody as the baker and somebody as the hockey player. And I'm just not totally certain on which one it is. And the yeah. only one that's coming to my mind right now is the Joe Nate one. <laughs> so I'm certain I've read it because bakery AU is way up there on my like must read AUs. I see bakery AU. I'm like, yes, please. Yes. Um, but... That, that fic was amazing. I loved it because Austin is just so dumb in it. And I think... <laughs> oh! Isn't there a cake involved? Yes. Okay, yes, now I follow. I yeah, remember Austin that one. Austin keeps buying cakes. With vague sort of recollection. Yeah. I'll have to find it after. Austin keeps um, buying cakes because he's a disaster. I mean, yes. I mean, yes. He, yes. He is a disaster. It's just, yes. One, um, one of my taglines for Austin is just, like, panic swag mode. <laughs> yes. Where, like, on the outside, it's cool as a cucumber, and on the inside, it's like, ah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, so, yeah, in another world, it would totally, total, totally, wow, I'm struggling, be worth a look. Um, it's not something that we are aiming at right now. It could be fun, though. Like, there's that really cute picture of them at Red Lobster. Not Red Lobster. Uh, the deck on Laguna Beach, because it came around Tumblr last night, so that's how I know. <laughs> um, here's one that I've been fascinated with okay. since the moment it came in. Okay. What is the difference between Sid's hesitation to be with Gino and Jordy's hesitation to be with Jason? Well, do you want to tackle it first? No. I want to see what you... It's been sitting in the back of my head for forever. I want to see what you say first. Oh... Fine, put me on the spot. Oh, um, yeah, um, that's my job. Well, with Sid, it's never a question that she and Gino were going to be together. I think that's the main difference. Like, so she It was knew, a when, not an if. Yeah, it was for sure a when. Because, remember, the ongoing theme through Sid's was timing. Is this the right time? This is a bad time. It's always a bad time until she decides she's done. Exactly. And she doesn't even wholly make that decision. No. No. So with Jordy, it was definitely more of the if. Because also she's afraid of the consequences of them being together and then being aware of the fact that, you know, trades happen and holy crap, the tr trades, I mean, <laughs> moves happened. Yeah. Um, and, but, so it's a matter of her having to work through that and being like, well, do, do I love this man enough to really want it, to take that leap despite all of the uncertainties? So. Which one day I will convince Joe to share the falling scene from, um, the deleted scenes of Sid Gino, which kind of puts into perspective. You probably haven't read it in a hundred years. Probably. Um, I have a very confused it was, expression on my face right it now. It was one of the very first scenes that got written for Sid before we determined that we weren't going to go back that far before we determined oh, the storyline okay. we yes, were going to yes, take. Yes, yes. And it kind of epitomizes just how convinced Sid was from day one that this was going to be a thing. Yeah. And how convinced Gina was from day one. I think with Jordy, it took her a little off guard. I don't mm -hmm. think she was anticipating... Um, falling in love at all, let alone falling in no, love with Jason. I have a feeling that for Jordy, like her mindset was that she was gonna fall in love after her hockey career. Yeah, it just wasn't then, on her priority list. Whereas yeah. Sid, like it was already there, it was already implanted, it was already a piece of her. Mm -hmm. um, in part, probably because the rebuild of the Pens was very much a Sid Gino experience. Yeah. So I think that's really the big difference. Um, there are definitely similarities between Gino and Jason, I think mm -hmm. just in terms of exactly what the question asker has here, which is how they'll wait for their girls. 
Um, oh, for sure. I think, though, too, you get into that certainty, uncertainty. Like, Gino, too, yes. knew it was going to happen. Oh, yes. Jordy, or Jason, this is what happens when they have the same initial, isn't quite so sure. No. And I think but, that's kind of the core. Yeah. Is one is a lot more uncertain than the other. Exactly. Which is fun. It was really cool. Yeah. Actually, Jordy was a bit of a... It was hard for us to get through Jordy. If you, I think, it, did we talk about that in the third podcast? Oh my god, yeah, probably it was more than one of them. Jordy, oh my god, worth it. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Clarissa has now taken that mantle. But oh, hundred percent. Wow. But I think to be fair, we changed the track of Clarissa a bunch of times as we were writing too. Yeah, well, I mean, we did that with Jordy as well. Yeah, but we like started Jordy from scratch twice. Yeah. No, we didn't have to do that with Clarissa. No. Clarissa was. Um, Mostly the house is haunted. No, my chicken fell. We're defrosting chicken for dinner and it fell into the sink. It's fine. It's safe there. <laughs> yeah, no, Clarissa was us trying to make sense out of the word vomit that I had put in there from last year's Nano. Like taking the word vomit and putting it into a coherent plot. Yeah. Which we did. Eventually. I think, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens when we go back to do the editing, which I'm hoping to get through some today because that's going to be... Yeah. What did we say it is? Is 26K right now? 24, mm, 26? 24. It's 24. No, you thought it was going to be 26K. Ah, there it is. 26 is Tyler, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, speaking of trades, though we talked about Jordy or Jason signing and then Jordy's trade a while back, uh, seeing Dylan and Chucky as teammates in GB. <laughs> now that Chucky's in Arizona. Yeah. Um, it's just... It's unfortunate sometimes that we wrote Dylan's story as early as we did mm -hmm. um, because it does mean that there's a lot of pieces that we don't necessarily get to explore as thoroughly as we could. Yeah. Um, I'm not... No. But we also placed Dylan's story early on, though. Yeah. But so. we had to because of the way the... Their like, relationship. we yeah. were never going to push Dylan and Mitch's relationship until this much later. Like, it wouldn't have yeah. made sense. No. Um, but I don't think it's so much Alex yeah. as Brenda. Yeah. And having Brenda and Dylan in the same vicinity on, like, a vaguely regular basis. Because I can see Brenda making a trip when she gets the chance. Chucky oh, yeah. making a trip when he gets the chance. For sure. And I think that's a lot more... Um, what you would see in GB than necessarily the two of them sure. causing chaos. I don't see. Absolutely. Yeah, it's more um, Galchenyuk being like, oh man, what have I done? Oh my god, I get another one. Yeah. Is Brenda in that group chat? Or is it just Lats and Dylan? It's just Lats and... It's just Lats, Dylan, and Clarissa in that particular group okay. chat. Um, which you'll see when you read Clarissa. Mm -hmm. Because I had opinions about there needing to be a very specific group chat of Lats and Dylan and Clarissa just yeah. sort of dealing with the ups and the downs, the literal ups and downs between teams. So, oh, I don't know where it is. There was a question about who's the keeper of the timeline. And either I didn't write it down or it disappeared from Tumblr. Joe is the keeper of the timeline, by the way. Mm -hmm. Emily is unfortunately terrible at keeping half of GB straight. Um, which girl drinks the most coffee? Was it Steph? No. I can see Sex. Because uh, we had a similar question. What was their go-to coffee drink? In a yeah, podcast. Steph. But Steph was um, the Steph was the really complicated latte. Yeah. No, it's just I'm referencing that. Referencing that just because I'm trying to remember yeah. the specific coffee orders. I want to say Mike was an espresso. I'm staring at people's faces right now. I still and think it would be sex. Like, I apologize if we go back on our old head cannons, but when it comes to coffee drinkers, and we're talking quantity, not type, Yeah. I think you're looking at Carrie. I think you're looking at Tyler. Though I think we said Carrie drinks tea, so there's that. Yeah, I can see sex out of all of them who drinks the most coffee. Maybe Mal. Probably Trixie drinks a bunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's... Yeah. Like, I don't think there's any addict. No. The way Shannon's an addict. Mm -hmm. Oh. Required throw Shannon under the bus moment. Take two. <laughs> what about summer trips? Who plans them? Uh, Danny. Sags. <laughs> Carrie for the annual 
annual BC yeah. Anham Lake trek to the ranch. Yeah. Jack has no idea why she's forced on a horse every summer. <laughs> and yet she is. And he still <laughs> refuses to get better at it. Um, I think, and, and when you break it down, I think you're looking like staff plans trips with lats. Um, I'm trying to think out of the babies. Clarissa would be the better planner out of the babies. Oh, but if sure. we're not putting Clarissa in there, that's a harder one. Because you're Mel, looking does at... Does Mel count as one of the babies? But she's not close. Like, I'm she's thinking... Go, oh, you mean... I'm that. thinking... Yeah. Oh. Well, you know what? There's that headcanon, though, that Trixie and Krauser do a lot of road trips. So it's probably Trixie. It's probably Trixie. You're right. With, like, some serious help, though. Because I feel like, despite... Like, I feel like their road trips are very... We are going from here to here, and we're going to stop in the middle. Yeah. And they don't necessarily plan... Yeah. Like, they're campers. Which I have this whole opinion about West Coast versus East Coast. Like, I swear, East Coast... Not East Coast, because that does bad things to the Maritimes, because I think the Maritimers camp more than they cottage. But I think, like, for Ontario, you cottage more than you camp, necessarily. Because mm. camping's a big deal in the West, but I'm a cottage girl. Like, I like a building, thank you. <laughs> But I'm a little bit of a hoity-toity human being, so there's that. Yeah, so, so it's definitely Trixie's good overall, but if you want the details right, you need Clarissa. Yeah, the and then it just depends on the groups that go. Yeah. Like, Ryan plans for her and SEGS, but SEGS does a lot of the, like, event planning. Mm -hmm. um, because Ryan and Tyler deaths go on vacation together. Mm -hmm. And the boys don't even know how that works. Like, I feel like that's one of those friendships where everybody's like, how is this a thing? Yeah. But it works because Ryan holds Sags accountable to her own insecurities, which is... Oh. Which you've seen, so... Or read. God, either. that was a good scene to write. Yes. Which girl has the most outrageous bachelorette party? And there is a right answer to this question. I mean, Brenda. Tyler. Yes, 100% it's Tyler. Okay, why Brenda? Uh, because she's totally the one who wants to go skydiving or something. Okay, relevant point. We're having two different definitions of the term outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like we have the same wavelength, it's just they're kind of parallel. Well, and, and this is the exact kind of, you know, we were talking earlier about how we're on, like we have exactly the same head cannons, and this is the kind of thing where we differentiate, is like we just don't define the, the key word the same way. Yeah. Because... Tyler's is the extravagant one. It's oh, the yeah. one that, like, they party for six days straight in Vegas. But, yeah, Brenda would 100% go skydiving. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Jack. <laughs> <laughs> forced on horses it carries. Forced to jump out of a plane for Brenda. I don't know if Jack would be that upset about jumping out of a plane. I feel like she'd have enough adrenaline junkie that she'd be into it. Mm, I think initially. I mean, she initially, and Sam went out. Well, she and Sam... Eichel and Sam went on that helicopter tour of the Rockies. Yeah, but being in a helicopter is different than jumping out of a plane. You're not wrong. <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying, there would be enough adrenaline junkie in her, she'd be into it. Yeah. She'd probably be mid-sky before she panicked, and then she wouldn't have time to panic because she'd be mid-sky. Yeah. Bless. So, yeah, no, absolutely. If we're talking, like, full-on extravagance, like, crazy rich Asian style um, bachelorette party... Because there is a bachelorette party in Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, that's totally Tyler's. See? Same wavelength. Yeah. Mild variation. Cooks. Carrie. Duh. <laughs> Carrie is an excellent cook. Who is Clarissa terrible? Is, uh, terrible chefs. Brenda? Um, I feel like she'd set things on fire. It, it has to be because we've got that yeah. whole thing where she ruins the pans. Yeah. Yeah. She Brenda does. is bad. Danny is wonderful, though it's Marinette. Who does most of it. Yeah. yeah just because of time. Clarissa, you were going to say, which is also... Clarissa's amazing. Um, I feel like Jack is okay. Yeah, Jack's okay. Clarissa's She's an trying. excellent hockey diet yes. cooker. Yes, yes, she is. Which Connor's grateful for because he's useless. Yeah. I think Ryan has the skill. Yeah. And but it's Jordan. Out of the three of those, it's yeah. Jordan that cooks. Yeah. Because Halsey and can't be trusted. With Segs, Segs can follow directions. If you don't give her directions, it's a shit show. I think Jamie can cook, though, because I feel like Jamie's mother would not in a hundred years let him go to Dallas <laughs> and then not have his brother and not be able to at least cook. And then when Tyler gets involved and she can't cook with a banana, his mother gets on him even further to be like, you need to, she can't. 
Jamie, Jamie, Jameson. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's an actual conversation that they have. Yeah. Yeah. So Jordy's pretty good as well. Steph's pretty good. Pretty good. Like, you know, she hasn't had to cook for herself that much. You know, like in Nashville, she was living with her mom. But when she moves to Columbus, then it's like, all right. Yeah. I, I got to actually put those lessons to work. So, um... Sid very. <laughs> Sid does pasta and PBJs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And they don't really learn, even though they should. Yeah. They get a lot of those pre-boxed, because Sid gets really anal about following directions. Yeah, yeah. She probably is a HelloFresh kind of girl. Yeah. Um, who ends up coaching? Oh, I want to say Sid, but no. no. Um, I think Stromer does. Hmm. You can see that. I think Jack does. I think we've talked about Jack coaching post. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't think many of them do, no, actually. not many. Like, they still are involved in hockey in various ways, shapes, and forms, but in terms of actual coaching. Like, okay. actual NHL-level coaches. Because I can see Brenda coaching a peewee team. Yeah. <laughs> She'd be an excellent peewee coach. Like, small children. Um, but, yeah. NHL-level, for sure, Jack and Dylan. I can definitely see Dylan with the stats mind and the playmaking and mm-hmm. plus Mitch's influence. Like, I feel like that would be a thing. Yeah. Um, if the women weren't hockey players, what would they be doing? Oh, gosh. I know. That's a tough one, actually. I feel like we needed... To Mitch, one, Mitch would be a YouTuber. <laughs> yes. Um, Carrie would be a horse trainer. Probably. And, like, the therapeutic horse trainer. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let us think. Let us think. Jordy would be <laughs> on American Ninja Warrior all the time. For sure. For sure. Like, she would be a stunt woman. Yeah. Who got into American Ninja Warrior, just like Jesse Grapp. So. Steph would probably be a model. Probably. But, like, not a runway model. You I don't like a fitness model? I don't know. I can't settle because she doesn't strike me as the type that could hack it in the runway world because she's not ruthless. Mm. Yeah, like I'm I'm undecided. Or do you mean like Instagram model? I'm probably thinking Instagram, like something that's a little less crazy. Yeah. Um brief spoiler for Clarissa, Clarissa would be a K pop star. Hundred percent Mike fitness model. Or would be like a personal trainer. Probably a personal trainer, for sure. Um, Tyler would be a socialite. <laughs> I still think I'm like, and this is completely because of the face claim, Ryan as a ballet dancer. Yeah. There's an AU there somewhere. Well, we've built Ryan into a very similar... Yeah. Like... Um, <coughs> bless you, Trixie. I don't know. <coughs> Holy cow! I'm done. Trixie, I don't know. Trixie, I don't know. No, but then we don't know Trixie enough to say. It's just like an angry little ball of hate. <laughs> Matt's, I couldn't tell you either. I'm not sure what I would do with Matt's. I want to just say baseball player. Like, I still think either way, Matt's would end up yeah. in a professional sports capacity. I think so as well. I think Sid would also. Like, it, it, it's too much dedication. I don't yeah. think... For sure. Some like, even it. if I try and think of what would we a you Sid, I get nothing. Yeah. It's hard. Um, I feel like it would still be something sports adjacent. If Agent? she wasn't. Huh? Agent? Because mm. you would still need something that has that, like... like True. Level of intensity. And yeah. Yeah, could be. Maybe. That's the closest. We're still not set on that, I'm not. I'm not set on a lot of these, yeah. though. Just because, like, I've never really thought about it. Yeah. Mel might be a teacher. Following her dad's footsteps. Yeah. She'd be an excellent teacher and then principal. Ooh. So, I, I can see that from Elle. Um, Marsha. Mm. I mm-hmm. like some sort of CEO because she has oh the mentality. God. Like, she could run a company. Who is... No, it's Marion, isn't it? Rayum, who does the, you know, the Carrie. Oh, my mom. Yeah, you know, the Carrie PKAU carries a ex military screwed up her knee. Vaguely. 
you've read it because you lost your mind. Well, yes, but it's been a while. Yes, but that one, I was thinking, I was thinking, like, yeah, to your point. Yeah. Maybe of, like, a security agency, too, who, mm-hmm. like, yeah. Danny's probably, like, running Sweden. Yeah, probably. I can see that. <laughs> Very no-nonsense. So, I think that's everyone. Yeah, I think, I think, um, when we get the opportunity to do this again, somebody should remember to resubmit that same question. So and we'll we take some more time to think about, because this, I didn't realize this was here or we would have talked about it Wait, pre-podcast. Wait, did we say Jack was? No. What would Jack be? I don't know. Exactly. That's why I didn't bother. Because I can't even with Jack. Like, I don't... It would... Again, you'd need something with the same dedication that could handle the salt. It's like our AU where she's the mayor. Yeah. Like, that would... It, it would have to be something like... Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Remember this. Resubmit it the next time. We'll talk about it beforehand. Really delve into the personality quirks that we think are the foundation of each woman. Because I think yeah. sometimes when we write, we don't think about them. They just are. Yeah. Um, and we'll have to get back to you. Mm-hmm. Now, kids, we talked about. Yes, we did. And my disclaimer here is that I'm not a huge fan of kid fic in general. So kid fic is not a headcanon I tend to... It's not a road I tend to go down. But don't worry, guys. I do. She All did. the time. And she dragged me down the road. Oh my so. god, did I ever. We're so sad we can't find that conversation. It was so good. Yeah, no, Emily basically started texting me probably a week before my corrections were due and was just vomiting. And it was uh, the clearest story I've had in a long time. Yeah. I was in the shower and then it came to me because like, listen, if you want good ideas, walk away from your computer. You're not going to find them there. Exactly. So I was like, okay have corrections to do but let's let's talk this out so um you want to start from the top though of the list yeah okay. jordy yeah okay so jordy um and jason adopt most likely they most likely adopt and they adopt a slightly older child probably yeah five or six years old because jordy does not want to be pregnant no does not want to deal with poopy screamy no babies and sleepless nights but Jason does want kids. And so. it's not that Jordy doesn't like kids. Yeah, it's just that that infancy, toddler kind of age range. And I feel yeah. like part of that is they choose to have kids after sex and bed do. So they've seen yeah. post-chaos of them. And we'll get there. But see post-chaos of them. And Jordy's like, I'm not into this. And so yeah. they figure out that what they can do is adopt. Because we talked about fostering too, but kind of agreed that... It would be too hard, and they probably wouldn't be able to make foster Yeah, they probably wouldn't be able to get past as foster parents. Yeah, unless it was post-hockey. Yeah, so. and they were somewhere settled. And yeah, but so that is Jordy. Sid? Um, has a whole mini hockey team. Yeah, and Gino's here for it. Yeah, and they toss points to figure out who plays for Russia and who plays for Canada. <laughs> God bless, that's hilarious. Um, Jack... And Connor, we talked about how have one boy and one girl. The boy comes first. The boy plays hockey, gets injured, and then goes into, like, sports medicine, sports... Or it's something, something science, like that. hockey, whether yeah. that's medicine. Like, this is why we're so upset that we can't find the headcanon, because it was literally so clear. Yeah. And it was, it was, like, we had exactly what injury he had. We had why he left. We had how he had the conversation with his parents that he was leaving hockey, and, yeah. like, it was... I'm so upset we can't find it to this day. They also have a little girl. Who is basically Jack. Who is Ninja. Jack. And Connor gives her shit for it. And Jack turns back and says, well, yeah, your son's favorite lullaby growing up was the Canadian National Anthem, so you can shut your whole face. Yeah. And, I mean, of course, Connor gives Jack so much crap about it, but let's be real. That little girl has him... Oh, my God. From day one. So, Yeah. The minute she comes out with curls, Connor's just like, yeah, no, we're done now. Yeah. I'm done. Put a fork in me. Bren! Um, also two, and one of the ki- both of the kids play hockey. One of them is a um, either a defenseman or a goalie, so then they... I feel like we agreed that it was a goalie because they spend too much time with Annie Carey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically what happens there. And we'll get to the opposite when we get to Carey. Yeah. Um, Steph and Roman have... Twins. Yeah. Also a boy and a girl. Also play hockey. Um, for a bit, at least. Um, and they're basically, you know, 
the little prince and the little princess out of all of you know but Steph is a stickler for manners so oh, there's like they have the divas but okay. like they are they, no but they're they, they're basically royalty like they have the manners yeah that's there's just no way Steph's gonna have demon diva children no she has no tolerance for it um you want to take Trixie Trixie you- yes does definitely but it's a complete surprise and a complete accident um they've talked about it they say it's a thing but it there's no timeline like I don't think I think the reason I think that is my headcanon for Trixie is everything for Trixie just happens yeah there's not really it's not an impulse per se because I think that takes away the autonomy but it is very much a we've talked about it we just don't have a timeline on it until the universe goes you need to have a timeline and here it is yeah so uh, they definitely have kids. Each one of them is a surprise. They're not really trying. It just kind of happens. Whether it's because Trixie goes off her birth control or how that falls down, I'm not completely settled on. But every single one of them is a like, oh, I'm pregnant. Cool. Yeah. Lats, um, Lats totally is the domestic type. Lats wants like three or four kids. And yeah. they have three or four kids. Yeah. Tom's Plus like it. dogs yeah. and stuff. White picket fence, everything. Yeah. So, yeah, like, idyllic domestic life, that is the Lada Wilson household. I mean, it's chaotic. Oh, yeah, but it's but, the best kind of chaos, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, what was the head kid that we talked about? Like, their their kid is the one that climbs into the fridge. The with- oven wants to get into the oven with the cornbread. Yes. <laughs> it was a Tumblr post. And uh, basically, yeah, one of their kids wants to get into the oven with the cornbread. And Steph is babysitting, Steph, and Steph, Steph is fault. like... <laughs> oh, it's not Steph's fault. Steph's like, why do your children want to get into the oven? How is this a thing? His favorite hiding spot is in the fridge with the cherries. Yeah. No, with the ketchup. Oh, the, that's right, the ketchup. <laughs> Sorry about <my> that. <laughs> um, Austin? They have kids. Yeah. And they have kids until either a complicated pregnancy or a complicated birth or a complicated like a medical complication that doesn't completely take away from her ability to give birth but enough that she's like we're not doing this again yeah, but they both three, want right? yeah I think three. I stopped it at three but they're both into having like six but it's literally science stepping in the way and going yeah please stop yeah um Nuge Twa. you said three yeah and her favorite headcanon for Kidline is Taylor is actually the disciplinarian. Yeah, and Jordan tries to be, but they walk all over him. <laughs> and parent-teacher interviews are always adventurous. Yes. Carrie and PK have a whole brood, of course. I think it was only three, though. I think it was a set of twins and one extra. Yeah, probably. And one of them is a forward, therefore hangs out a lot with um, Auntie Brenda. And Carrie just can't even. Yeah. Even PK can't even, because PK's like, my entire family is on defense. What are you doing? No, they're not. Jordan's a forward? Yeah. Oh, see? Look, odd one out. <laughs> um, Clarissa, yes, because she wants her own um, mini K-pop group. <laughs> and and they're, they're all adorable. Yes. It's the worst thing ever. Yeah, they're, they're probably in the running against Steph and Roman's kids as the most beautiful out of all the GB children. <laughs> Danielle. Well, has canon. kids. Yeah. Yeah. The Canon City kids are Danny's kids. Um, uh, Segs adopts. Yes. At least two. Yeah. From oh, yeah, a foreign no, Lisa country. Too. Yeah. From, from a foreign, foreign country. Um, um, mostly, we had this discussion. It's not about her not wanting to be pregnant so much as what she's put her body through for so long, whether that's something viable. Yeah. And um, I think for her, she sees enough that she would rather go overseas and and help somebody than risk the drama that comes. Like, I mean, I don't think she's the type to want to put herself through the drama. And, like, Jamie suggests IPF, and she's like, yeah, but, like, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And yeah, we're millionaires and I get it, but also like I don't I don't want to go through that emotion. I don't want to have to Yeah. And like why can't we just help out? Yeah, I think she's just very me. realistic about yeah. it. Yeah. And like for all that adoption is a very long process, like it seems more immediate because it's like they can prep for it. And I think then, for them too, it's yeah. one of those roller balls. Yeah. Um so that that's that is Tyler Marsha had yeah, Cannon Kids. Cannon Kids. 
Dylan, that was... Dylan's was really cool. It kind of had canon. We kind of came at it from different points of view. Mitchie wants kids. Dylan doesn't not want kids, but like she'd be okay without them. And this is where it was complicated to explain because there's a whole lot of discourse right now around women being able to choose. Yeah. And I think that that is always an option. I think for Dylan, it starts out as she definitely does it for Mitch. And Mitch never finds out. Connor knows. Connor is the only one who knows. Mitch never finds out. And that's because Dylan hates pregnancy, can't stand it worth a banana, but loves the kid that she gets. And it doesn't necessarily change her mind about being pregnant and thinking pregnancy is amazing and all that kind of stuff, but it definitely puts a different perspective on her life. And I think she does feel that her life is enriched because of the child that they do end up having. I think, like, in hindsight, we were talking a little bit earlier this morning. I was like, I think they definitely have more than one, and I'm not sure, in hindsight, they might have one, then adopt one, because yeah. Dylan's just miserable for nine months. And, I mean, let's I be honest, that, Mitch yeah. doesn't like that Dylan is miserable. He can't no. stand when Dylan's miserable. So, you know, he feels there's a bit of guilt on his part for putting her through that, too, because I think, despite never having the conversation and never verbalizing that... Um, Mitch does know that it yeah. wasn't her first choice. Yeah, because Mitch is not an idiot. And he knows everything. Okay, he is an idiot. But when it comes to Dylan, Dylan he knows Yeah. He knows her. Yeah. Like he knows nothing else. Yeah. So um Yeah. Mel? Mel has um I forgot if it was also like a complications thing. Um, but Mal ends up only having one, and even though she would probably like more, there are enough kids in the Subban brood for, you know. Yeah. There are a ton of cousins, basically. Yeah. So she ends up being quite happy with just the one, and the kid is a diva, as Em said. But, yes. you know, in the nice way, in the way that, like, PK is a diva. You know? And so, therefore... Therefore, PK is completely wrapped around this child's finger. Yes, 100%. So, I'm guessing it's a girl. Uh, I think we talked about it being a girl. Yeah. Um, cup win. Oh, did you have another one you wanted to go no, back? No, no, no. Okay, cup win. Yay! How do the girls celebrate a cup win? Um, we know how Tyler does. We know how Sid does. Yes. Um, oh, man. I feel like Brenda would lose her mind. Yeah. She would. Austin would not lose her mind. No. Austin would be chill on the outside, insane on the inside. Yeah. I don't think there would be... The only person I could see fountain jumping is Sex. Mm-hmm. I think she's the only one that would. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I feel like most of them would be pretty low-key about it. I think they'd get hammered for three days I mean, straight. I mean, that what you do. Yeah. But, As is custom. Yeah. But... In terms of crazy jumping in fountain celebrations, I think the Caps take the cake on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is understandable, okay? Yeah. First time in 44 years. Oh, there's the question! Joe is keeping track of the timeline. Thank God, because Emily's just useless. Um, will we write anything about Vegas? Again, we never say never. But not currently in the cards. Not currently. It will appear in Mel's. Just... Well, yeah, because by nature of Mal being moved to Vegas. Yeah. Claimed off waivers? I can't remember. Me either. That's unfortunate. We'll look it up when it's time. So. Sadine's retiring. Yes. Bittersweet. Very bittersweet. Very, very bittersweet. Again, this Sid is a never is... say never from our part because yeah. we've talked about it, but yeah. like we're not in a place where we can write about it. Without being super emotional. Well, but also, like, time. Well, also I'm wanting time. to do it justice, but, yeah, Sid... Sid does not take Danny's retirement well. Not at all. She takes Danny's retirement like she took Duper's retirement. Just, like, why? Yeah. And it's all the more frustrating for her because it's Danny's choice. It's not yeah. like Duper, who got forced out by nature of medical complications. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's hilarious because Marsha then finds herself being... The, the mediator in this situation and she's just like why 
She doesn't get it. How, how does, did I, how, how? How has this happened? And she's also keeping in the back of her mind that she's probably also thinking of stepping I'm down soon. Probably, they probably have a lot of conversations, Marsha and Danny, about retiring and then how to handle Sid. Because I think, and we've talked about this in previous podcasts, so we'll just like TLDR it, but mm-hmm. Sid came up with Danny and Marsha and it was just them. Yeah. And for a long time. For a long time, because I think the next one... Well, yeah, well, I mean, no, here's the thing. It's like Sid came up first alone. Then Danny and Marsha were in the next season. So, it, and then it was a long time until I think it was Brian. Or Carrie no, or both. No, Carrie. But Carrie didn't Carrie, come right Carrie in. Carrie was though. up and down. Carrie was up and down, even though she was drafted after Sid. But um, same year. Like, I think Sid went first and Carrie went fifth. Yeah. So, um, which just it, takes longer yeah, for goalies to get a, into the Yeah, league. it took a longer time for Carrie to come up. So it was very much Sid and Danny and Marsha. So it's a little traumatizing for Sid to mm-hmm. then lose them, for lack of a better phrase, even though her rational brain definitely yeah. understands, you know, Danny's getting older, she's getting older, but it's still difficult for her. Yeah. Absolutely. So she does not take it well whatsoever. Before we go on to talk about our OTP for the rest of the podcast, because that's the last few questions we have, there was a couple in the inbox, again, that came in last night, about who um, we're attached to, which characters we see ourselves reflected in, who we would want to be, if there's one of the girls that we would like to date, or the kind of girl we'd want to be our big sister. I'm going to say sister in general, because as a big sister, I'm cool with not having a big sister. I like being the oldest. Same. But, like, to have as a sister, I think Segs would be really cool. Jack would just be fun. I think Jack and I would get along like a house on fire, to be honest with you. Dylan I would give shit to every day of the week. Um, yes. I know in terms of sisters, those are kind of my cores. I think I'd find Steph frustrating as a sibling. As a friend, you can kind of... Just because I know, like, on a very personal note, that I've struggled with my own perfectionism. And to have that be that close, I feel like I'd struggle a lot more. Yeah. Which is no knock on Steph because she's an absolute sweetheart. Just I know me and I know my stupid brother whom I adore. Um, yeah. Clarissa is a lot like many of the girls that I consider younger sisters within, you know, the Filipino, the Filipino community in my hometown. So, yeah, I've got a lot of Clarissas in yeah. my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, we sort of talked about in terms of attachment. Like who we like, relate to and who's who our spirit relate animal. To the most. And um, I think for sure it's still always for me, Jack. Well, maybe just in terms of uh, in terms of attachment, um, not so much that I see myself reflected in, more that perhaps there are aspects of her personality that I would love yeah. for myself. Like I just love her lack of Care. Fs. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I wish I could be more like that. And I don't know, I just, I love that sort of prickly exterior and marshmallow interior. Which is Jack to a T. Yeah. It's just, it's, I don't know what it is about it that I just really like and am therefore attached to. But Mm -hmm. I'm more of a Segs and Ryan girl. Like, I think those two for me hold a particular spot in my heart. Um, I think I put more emotion than I even originally kind of understood into Tyler in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think only time and distance has really shown that that's the case. Yeah. I think if we had written Dylan and Mitch as the opposite, so Mitch was the girl, I would feel differently. Yeah. But because we didn't, I think Tyler is my big, like, that's the one that I'm particularly attached to. And I get a lot of, like when random head cannons pop into my head 90% of the time if they're not kid line and they're not McEichel or Stromarner they are Tyler yeah yeah and I mean we've talked about putting aspects of ourselves within all of the characters because as a writer that's just what you do Uh, yeah small bits of you end up in every character yeah you always give a little piece of yourself yeah. Which is cool, but I think that's why like writing Jack to segue into the rest of the OTP questions was such an adventure because I think there are, if it's not actual pieces of our personality, it's pieces of our personalities that we'd like to see. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I exercised a few demons in Jack for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. 
Um, we want to talk about the high ankle sprains. <laughs> why? Just why? Yeah, it's... I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why there was a kind of lack of Jack and Connor storylines this season. Slash, I think the other side of it, though, is both of them after World Cup really stomped hard on the rivalry narrative. They did. Um, and neither of them really have time for it anymore. I think it helps that Jack kind of disappeared into the ether post uh, last season. Um, yeah. And understandably so. I mean, it can't be easy for a guy who I understand is as competitive and intense as Jack Yeah. to go through two seasons of no playoffs. Absolutely. Um, I'm interested to see what this season is going to be in Buffalo. Um, yes. So I think the hopes, dreams, and aspirations will at least get some more Jack narrative and hopefully more Connor narrative that isn't dragging the Oilers kicking and screaming through the hockey season. Yeah. Because Connor McDavid deserves better than the team he had last season too. Somebody find me the stats. I want to know if it's an off season or what. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's a case for both of them, though, like, dragging their teams. And at least, I don't know, in some cases, Buffalo seems to be... I like that they're trying out their young players. Like, I love that Middlestack came up, that they were working with Nylander. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be interesting to see. I'm actually going to the preseason game. Did I tell you this? Between the Leafs and Buffalo in September. So I'm interested. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I'm going. Uh, I'm interested to see um, how the lineups shake up in that respect in terms of like who's gonna who they're gonna try and who they're gonna mix and match and if I don't see Eichel I'll live I guess yeah I'm just I'm begging the universe to put Cliff Poo on the ice at least for a bit yeah it would be cool to see him play too because I miss that I miss that kid (laughs) yeah and then he got traded and it's all over the place yep yep um so yeah we want we definitely (laughs) we wish much health upon Jack, please. Speaking of the lack of playoffs or the playoffs from last season for Connor McDavid, um, do they complain to each other and bond? Does it cause stress? Um, I think this is the one. So I feel like to a degree we haven't been clear about Jack and Connor's relationship because. It is probably, arguably, the second most stable relationship in GB. Yeah. And Um, maybe we don't show that as much. Maybe not. Or maybe it's just so nuanced. um, It's probably a combination of the two. Part of this question is if they were to break up. And for us, there is no if. It's a straight up no. They would Um, never break up. Connor and Jack, they get each other. I, it's one of those things where you sit there and you go, the only reason they weren't friends is because the media pumped up a rivalry that never existed. Yeah. And once you get over that hump of knowing and understanding and internalizing that it's an entirely made up thing, Mm -hmm. it changes. Like, I mean, listen, if you're watching Connor McDavid, he can get just as salty as Jack. Yeah. It's just he's been so media trained due to being an exceptional player and all that kind of stuff that he doesn't show it the way Jack does. But if you think Connor McDavid is not just as salty, please go back and watch the post Saint Ho- San Jose game where they got blown out like seven to nothing. Oh, yep. And it tied the series. Yep. And everybody came in like, what did it feel to lose by seven goals? And McDavid's response is, by my math, it's still 2 2. Yeah. Connor can get just as salty. I love that he's getting salty younger than Sid did because yeah. Sid is salty now and it's the best thing ever. Yeah. So I think I think either we haven't been clear or it's just so nuanced. There isn't, even when they fight, it's yes. not, they're not, I think they have the same values. I think that's where it comes from. Yeah. When it comes down to it, things like family, things like hockey, things like, you know, the way they see the world is similar enough that there's never a point where the fight is bad enough that they consider separating. Yeah. The distance is hard. The distance is hard. And, you know, we wrote, with how they feel about playoffs and stuff, we did write... The Coachella. The story of Jack dealing with the fallout of her not being in playoffs and Connor being in the playoffs. And it's that's exactly how it plays out. It's like, Jack needs time to get over herself. And to get over, you know, her own 
you know, those issues. Connor hates every minute of it, but he yeah. can but he, comprehend it. Yeah. Like, after that initial, like, Jack going, I need this space. Mm -hmm. Like, even though I'm here, I need this space. Connor understands enough to back off, let Jack have that space, you know, have the intervention with Halsey and beer and video games enough for her to be like, all right, I'm over it. Now I'm all in for your playoff run. Yeah. You know, because it is about him. Mm -hmm. So, and she's completely okay with that. Yeah. She wishes it were her. Like, I think it's one of those bittersweet pangs. Yeah. The bittersweet pangs um, that you can hear sometimes people talk about when they talk about, like, their buddies that are further in the playoffs and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But I think yeah. at the end of the day, um, the the fact that they had to go through so much drama to get to where they are. Yes has developed ways of dealing with the drama that doesn't affect how they feel about each other and how they go about their lives with each other. No. And it's like, because if the situation were reversed and Jack's in playoffs and Connor's not, or Jack goes farther in playoffs than Connor... Connor yes. would be salty. Yeah. Oh my he God. Would. He would. He'll deal with it slightly differently than Jack dealt with it. He probably wouldn't go to Buffalo. He'd probably pout in Edmonton or Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, he needs that time to get over it, and then it's all about Jack, mm -hmm. and then boom. I can see him not going to a bunch of games, like the next round that Buffalo gets through when Edmonton gets eliminated, whether that's yeah. the first or second, but then he shows up for game one of the next one, yeah. doesn't tell her she, he's coming, just shows up and is right there on the glass. Oh, yeah. And she's like, uh, like happy and also angry, and she probably reams him out. Yeah. And... Connor probably figures he deserves it, and then it's all right in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, they're... Of course they argue. Of course they argue. Oh my but, god, they're so far from a perfect relationship. It drives but, the entire GB up the wall. Yeah, but their conflict resolution skills are actually decent. And decent in a way that works for them, I think. Yeah. Like, they're really good for the way it works for them. There's a yeah. lot of reading between the lines. There's a lot of trying to understand a lot of very complicated and nuanced emotions but I think yeah. one of the things that they are both able to do is because their actual trajectories are very similar in terms of franchise players in terms of the pressure that's put on them in terms of like all of that kind yeah. of stuff they can put themselves in each other's shoes enough mm -hmm. once the initial emotion has passed that they can then solve the problem in an effective way exactly so yeah they're they're not PK carry stable but or, they are yeah but they are kid really, line is the other one i'm thinking yeah. that's like they argue but it's petty arguments and it's yeah. dumb and they like it's nothing yeah but they're solid yeah so the question of a breakup is just not even not for us not um, for us no i mean i mean i did write a mechanical breakup but you know they got back together oh in the other one i was like um no it was a steph roman one come on now it's sin what do you, what we've talked about it before. <laughs> in the group chat. No, in a podcast. The one we did at your place last year. No, two years ago. February, shoot, when I was there for the Oilers game. We okay. definitely talked about it because we went through the list of all of the fix that we have in our Google Doc. Oh, okay. We talked about it very briefly. Alright, I don't remember, but it's a giant bomb, just let it go. <laughs> we've got different priorities. Uh last but not least, and I really like this question. Um in your McEichel, Jack has come to terms that McDavid is just better, which I don't fully agree with, but we'll get there. Yeah. But does Connor understand her plight? I mean, I know he pines for her and genuinely loves her, but does he understand why she's so upset and contemplative when they first got together? Well, let's address the thing with the first thing is that she, it's not, it's not that Connor is better. And I think we addressed that at the end of their story. I don't know if we did. I'd have to go back and read it. Um, but it's just acknowledging that they're they're better together. They pump each other up. And if we're talking they, about skill in terms yeah. of hockey, I think what happens with them is they come to terms with the fact that they play a different game. And this do. is the bane of my existence they when people do. talk about the real life McDavid and Eichel. Yes, because mm -hmm. their playing styles, it's like apples and oranges. Yes, yeah. they're both forwards yes they're both centers yeah however 
their games are incredibly yeah. different. Incredibly different. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, mean, I when, can talk about well, Jack when, as a player. When do you see McDavid go and dig a puck out of the corner? No. When do you see Eichel go dig a puck out of a corner? He'll do it, yeah. right? Yeah. And Jack is built like Sid in the sense of it's lower body density. So mm-hmm. where McDavid stick lifts, Jack just goes, yes, excuse me, please. And like, it's a hip check. And the next thing you know, the puck is free right like yeah and that's two entirely different styles of game like yeah. i would argue that jack is not as finessed as mcdavid but it's like jack will pancake you and mcdavid yeah. just doesn't have the density to do that yeah he's it's, a lanky mofo yeah connor's lanky jack has strength oh my god like the way that jack skates yeah is oh my god yeah that video just destroys me yeah no, there's time. a video on youtube breaking down the, yes. science the science the, behind it. Like, it's so stride. good. It's so good. Bauer did it, too. Get Fit Friday? Was it a Bauer Get Fit Friday? I'm not sure, but we can put the link in the post. And uh, I remember that. Um, but I think... I think it's... So I don't think necessarily, therefore, that Connor has to understand it. I think he's no. very frustrated because I think he comes at it from going, we are literally in the same boat. Yeah. Why are you doing this? We are literally both franchise players in teams that have been shit for years. Like, what? How are we not friends? How are we not on the same wavelength in this? And yeah, Yeah. I don't think he understands. But I don't think he can. Like, I don't think it's possible for him to understand the complicated emotions that Jack goes through in terms of going second because it's not just going second. It's also... It's tied into gender. It is. And And it's not something that, as a guy, he's ever going to know. Or understand, or any, yeah. any, and I don't think he has to. Like, I don't think, I think he tries for a while, and then I think he kind of goes, I understand it enough to recognize that it was real, and it, it continues to be something that is a struggle around the league. I don't think he can ever put himself in those direct shoes. No, he can't put himself in the shoes, but the most he can do is support her, support the other women, call out crappy behavior yeah from other players when it's happening you know yeah which i think like, that tends to be more of a girl thing though i just think he backs up ryan when ryan loses her bananas yeah yeah no it's not like the one i think it was in my OU at hockey verse where was steve no OU at. i think you had one with steve well yes steve does that too but david also does in the OU at yeah hockey he verse. does that's right he does i remember that yeah, none of them pull a Steve or a Prince Charming. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think, I don't think he, like, it's hard, it's hard to kind of, this is one of those things where um, the nuance is mm-hmm. so subtle. Yes. And it's so hard to talk about because it's so subtle and it's so careful. Mm-hmm. Like, I know when we were talking about Jack originally, there were a couple of, like, major plot points that we very deliberately did not go for because we didn't want to go down because it's not their relationship is not a fight like Jack's no. Jack's issue is with the media it's not with Connor and it just takes her a while to get to that point and she blames Connor until she internalizes the fact that it's a media narrative created yeah rivalry and it just takes her a while to get there yeah and that's kind of all it is. Like, it's not... It doesn't have to be a big, complicated thing. Except for the fact that it 100% is. So, um... It's kind of... I feel like it's a kind of cop-out answer for us to say he doesn't have to understand it. But he doesn't. Because it is so different from his experience. Yes. I think his frustration stems more from, like I said before, the fact that he feels like they should be on the same wavelength. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they aren't just pisses him off. Yeah. Like, it, he doesn't, he hates, I don't think he knows it at the time, because at 18, you don't, you, you don't understand the nuances either. Nope. But it, it drives him crazy that she's letting the media dictate their relationship. And he can't, like, I think it's a good 20, like, 10, 20 years down the line before he can actually say, oh, that's, that's really what it was. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it takes him a while. Um, but I think at the end of the day, they do figure out a way to come to terms yeah. around what originally happened. And I think at the the point where 
um, they just kind of say, you know, that was our struggle. Yeah. And that's kind of news weather and sports. Like, it it happened. It's a thing that happened. We can't change it. We're going forward from here, and we're solid as God awful anything. Yeah. And again, it is that more nuanced thing. It might come out more in Connie. It could. Just because Jack is different, and yet exactly the same. <laughs> So uh, we'll see if we can... I'm not going to make a deliberate effort to do it, but we'll see if the nuances come out a little bit more in Connie just by nature of the different way that we're addressing the narrative. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all for us. We thank you for joining us on this adventure and hope it isn't three hours long, even though the recording is. Uh, once again, we will link a bunch of stuff down below for you back in the Tumblr post. You might want to keep that open. And... We hope to see you in the comment section of Clarissa when we finally edit it and put it up and next time when we manage to get together to do this. Whenever that will be. Hopefully not, not in a year. year. From now. <laughs> but, you know, life happens. We'll see. We'll see. It'll be fun. This is always fun. So thanks for joining us and we hope to see you next time. Bye.